Welcome to Top Video Game Podcast of the Week from HorribleNight.com. I am Justin Lacey. Joining me tonight is Andrew Cooper. I, I never call you Andrew. I know that sounds really weird. <laughs> Coop's here. Coop is here. Coop is here. Coop is in the house. It is 1st of July uh, 2013. This is our interactive gaming update show. Uh, we pose a bunch of questions out on our Facebook page every week and are looking for your answers, as well as uh, we're going to discuss our own, but before we do that, <laughs> Chad has their own nicknames for you, Coop. Coop. I know. <laughs> Actually, That's I got to gotta applaud Aaron's. Koopa Doopa Fooba Loop. That's pretty is, good. Is the first That's one good. that hasn't actually had think, the word poop in it. I don't think I've ever had an F in it either. <laughs> so that's that's a new one for me. Uh, but before we get to gaming, uh, what's actually been going on with you? Oh, not a lot. I've had a sick, sick kid last week. So you know how that is. He said he was like um, a little space heater. He was. His fe- well, they called us. He. Uh, when he was at daycare, he had, his fever went up to 103.5, so they made us pick him up, and then we'd pump him full of drugs, and it would go down, <laughs> and the drugs would wear off, and he'd go back up, and you know we did that for like four, three or four days. Um, so, so a lot of that, and he, he finally just got over that this weekend. But uh, how high is too high? 103 sounds really, really high to me. I don't. It's a high. It's high for us, but for little kids, it's not. Okay. Um, I I think for like infants, it can get up to because like they're so small. They're yeah. s- such compact little. All right, <laughs> yeah. Whatever. No, I I think it can be like 104, 105 before you have to start to really freak out. Oh, like they're gonna... hundred. They're hundred and three is our hundred and one. Oh, interesting. I had, like that. I had yeah. no idea. Yeah. But he's recovered now. Yeah, he's good. I, there's a story here I need you to tell me again about Static X. Oh, yeah. So, okay. So, um, this weekend, um, Lindsay took Molly out to some fancy girls' clothes festival up in Fort Wayne. Those crazy dresses Molly wears. <laughs> so, me and Wes were home. Me and Wes, Wes were home by ourselves. And, uh, you know, I do everything I can to, to influence them in the correct ways of music and video games. So, we were cleaning the house, listening to Static X, like we should be. <laughs> and, you know, he likes to dance anyway, but, and this is the first time he's ever done this, and I've never um, I've never showed him this. I've never tried to get him to do this. But he starts jumping around, swinging his arms, and he runs into the corner and is, like, hitting the wall. And like, he's got his own little mosh pit going over in the corner. <laughs> and it was, the, it was the funniest thing I've ever well, seen. Well, he's not, he's not even two, right? Yeah, he, he just turned... Uh, 19 months okay. this month <laughs> somewhere around there and he's already moshing um and yeah he's moshing and and the music windows did its weird thing where the volume dimmed i think i had steam open and uh he like stopped and he's like oh and then i turned it back up and he Im- immediately started jumping around and <laughs> swimming his arms again and it, it was it was perfect i was so proud <laughs> well is um what i know Ozzy got back together with Black Sabbath. Are they doing another Ozfest? We can. Was it too soon to take him? Uh oh, no, never too soon. <laughs> um, I've actually never been to Ozfest though. Well, there we go. That's a good family Maybe outing. We, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we could take him to that Manson concert at the wherever it is. That might be. Time. That might be a little too moody. I don't know if That's Manson too. rocks that yeah, way that anymore. True. Yeah, no, not anymore. <laughs> Maybe when Rob Zombie swings in the town, yeah, he See, comes about every year. Uh, L- Lily likes it when I listen to the zombie music. So, oh, yeah. um, speaking of headbanging, I watched a independent film called Hesher, uh, which Coop, if you <laughs> if you've actually seen the logo, they act- they actually ripped off or got permission to use the Metallica font and styling <laughs> nice. for this. Nice. Um, so it's starring uh, Jason Gordon Levitt. Is that his name? Yeah, whatever. JGL and. He basically looks like Cliff Burton, the old <laughs> um, bassist from Metallica, and um, he he's essentially a squatter in this movie that that centers around this family with like a fourteen year old boy who just lost his mom. It's like really, it's a really messed up dark comedy. But um, if you like metal metal at all, hit this 
JGL's character, Hesher, is just... He's ridiculous. It, I haven't seen... It's like a time warp, because he drives around in like this old, beat-up black van just listening to... I think the only bands I heard in the movie were Metallica and Motorhead. And that was nice. pretty much it. And he's just headbanging the entire time. And like he he's staying with these people and they're you know they're they're live they're just so depressed and he's tr- he tries to cheer them up in his own weird ways by causing basically destruction he's just he's just um kind of insane and he'll go off on these like weird metaphors about like how he only has one nut and somehow <laughs> it will like relate to what they're doing even though you don't know if that's um really what he's intending it's a really weird movie. It's not uplifting, but I don't know. Like watching a movie with a random metal dude, and it was really different. So if you're in that mood, check out Hesher because <laughs> it's on Amazon streaming. So nice. I also uh, got attacked by some geese this weekend in my own backyard. What was it? Was it the ones from next door? No, so we have the ones next door that are basically domesticated ducks that rule the pond behind our house. And uh, we we feed them and usually have our gate open to our backyard so they can walk in and and um, eat in our backyard. But every now and then, in like... In your backyard? Yeah. <laughs> every now and then, the geese show up, too. And there's, like, a new family of geese. And so I'm, like, standing on my... Like, by my back door, full yards length away from... Uh, these geese that just walk through my gate with their whole little family. I was like, oh, look, the geese family's coming in. And, you know, Lily thinks it's adorable because they've got the little little, uh, ducklings and all that and all that. But they, you know, they keep coming towards us. And I don't like geese to begin with. I just think they're shitty animals. And they just keep walking towards us, walking towards us. And then, like, we're not moving. We're not causing, we're not chewing them away. We're not doing anything. And as they get closer and closer, the parents just the parent geese just start hissing at us and i'm just like i'm not in you're in my space (laughs) but i figured it wasn't really worth picking a fight with the goose so we went went inside um and we're scared out of our own yard so nice nice (laughs) it was i did not expect that to happen so i hate geese too they're they're gross they're just obnoxious animals and they shit over everything yeah, they do. Yeah, I can't uh, believe you leave your gate open. Well, I'm not anymore. That was like the first weekend we tried that because we don't mind the ducks coming in, but the geese yeah. can fuck off. So, yeah, they can. <laughs> Unleashed a quack down. <laughs> you can, I you can actually, borrow, you can borrow a gunner. That would be. That's he'll, why I need a dog. That would be. He'll that's take what care you do. Of your geese problem. Yeah, yeah, but then you got dead geese. Yeah, that's a whole other problem. He'll, they'll they'll be everywhere. He'll he'll spread it out. <laughs> uh, moving on to video games uh, we want to know what your game of the week is if you are just joining us in chat uh, let us know uh, but Coop, what's your game of the week? Uh, my game of the week is very different for me I've been playing Dark Souls um, I picked it up a long time ago because I was kind of intrigued by the difficulty mm-hmm. even though I hate I don't I, I wouldn't say I hate RPGs but I've never really gotten that excited about them. And I think it's mainly just the character building side of it. I There's too many choices and it stresses me out. But, uh, but you know, it looked cool. The boss battles looked cool from what I had seen in the videos. And, uh, you know, Nathan said it was like one of his favorite games ever. Um, mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah, I guess I never so, understood your original draw to the game. Like, why out of, why uh, out of all the RPGs <laughs> this is the one that... Yeah, I want to go with the most difficult and most complicated one. Yeah, I, I actually think that was it. <laughs> it was just everybody's like, "Oh, this game's impossible," so I was like, "Oh, I can beat it," um, and that was that was my main motivation. Gotcha. So, so I bought it a while ago, and I I didn't start it because I have, you know, too many games to play, and it was going to take some motivation to get going with it. But I started it the other day, and it's it's hard. It, uh, <laughs> it's <laughs> they weren't lying with it. Um, but it's it's kind of fun. I mean, I'm I'm slowly getting into it. It it was pretty rough at first, because um, you know I'm not really the 
I'm not really into defense. I'm kind of a run and gun kind of guy, and you can't do that in this game at all. Yeah, there's no guns. There are no guns. Yeah, there's no guns. For <laughs> one. Well, I, I got a crossbow, but then I ran out of arrows, and I killed the merchant. So I'm kind of screwed. <laughs> Which, so my character build is actually an archer, and I'm completely screwed right now with with my uh, I have both a bow and a crossbow, and I can't use either one of them because I well I have one arrow, so I'm saving it until I need it. But uh, yeah, until I get to the next area where I find another merchant, I'm pretty much just left to what I can loot from things that I that I kill. But um, so what made you stick with it? Um, I don't know. It's been kind of fun uh, live stream. I've every time I've played, I've live streamed it. So I've had chat in there, th- kind of coaching me along. Do you think you'd quit if you hadn't been live streaming it? Actually, yeah, I would have because the first night I played, um, a buddy of mine was in chat and he had played the game and he he said he joined just because he saw that I was playing and he literally came on to tell me not to go the way that I went first. So. You get ah. to this one area, and you can basically take a right or you can take a left. And if you take a left, you um, run into these skeletons that you aren't powerful enough to take out, and they just kept killing me over and over. And you know, he said he knows multiple people that went that way and then just gave up because he can't get past it. And he's like, no, you need to go the other way. So I went the other way, and I was like, oh, yeah, I can kill things. This is much better. <laughs> um, so so had I – because I, I literally couldn't figure out where else to go. Um, so I, I probably would have – you know, tried that for an hour or so, and then just given up. Have you but, um, have you looked anything up on how to play it, or are you pretty much just I don't know using chat's advice and just learning as you go? Uh, just learning as I go. I did look up a, a couple of the terminology on some of the items that I had because I wasn't sure what it was referring to. Um, well, because I you know it kept referring to Estus, and I was like, what the heck is Estus? So. You know, like, oh, yeah, that's my health and stuff like that. So there were just a few minor things like that that I had to look up just to see what that item did because I didn't want to use it right away in case I needed it later. But um, for the most part, I'm just figuring it out as I go. I haven't, I haven't looked up any, you know, walkthroughs as far as saying go this way or go this way. Um, trying to do it legit. Yeah, have you, um, Chad wants to know if you've played with anybody online yet, have any multiplayer I stuff? I haven't. Um Nathan wanted to play with me. He actually started another character just to do it, but we haven't been able to sync up yet. And, and no one's invaded your world yet? Nope, not yet. Uh-huh. I invited a couple people. Okay. I saw, well, it was before I knew that's what it really was. There was a, you run across, you know, these little markers that you can summon people into your world. And I've clicked on them a few times, but nothing ever happened. Oh, okay. so they, must, they must have denied or something. I don't know. They probably but, saw uh, your stream and how bad you were doing and didn't want to <laughs> yeah, join seriously. it no i'll find another game that's fine yeah well you're officially farther in this game than i am i never got past the first boss but i always assumed i'd go back to the nice. game because i played a lot of demon souls I, I beat like two bosses in that game um really enjoyed it and still plan on going back to this especially with all the uh the pc modding there um uh, but i did talk to you a little bit i want to see how you do your next stream and we'll see where your your uh frustration level is but uh, depending on where you're at, I may or may not make a uh, a wager with you as far as... Um, <laughs> as if far you, as how far I'll make it? Yeah, if you actually um, beat the game. Um, I'm not... I'm not at a real frustrating part yet. It okay. was... it was. It's more... It's kind of humorous at this point. I mean, you can totally... Totally see where the guys who are making this game are just like, all right, so they're going to they're gonna do this, and then when they go through here, we're going to do this. <laughs> and that just happens over and over. So, you know, I'm all excited and celebrating when I beat the second boss. And I go through a doorway and, uh, you know, climb up some stairs and start heading down this bridge. And this dragon flies over and torches me and you're dead. I'm like, Seriously? <laughs> I just... and then, so <laughs> that, that's actually where I'm at right now. Um, there's this bridge I have to cross and there's this dragon just chilling at the other side. And if you get too close to him, he sets you on fire and you die. So I'm... <laughs> trying to find an alternate route around him. Um, I'll just go through the fire. It's fine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I also cannot, I've noticed anytime I've watched anyone stream this game, this goes for even when I was in the room with Josh while he was playing, I cannot give good advice 
when I see someone play, I, like I try to always push the person into doing <laughs> something that I wouldn't do, and just to see what would happen. And uh, yeah. so I, I am a complete asshole in chat when people are playing Dark Souls. So well, there's also as you're playing. One of the things I didn't know for the longest time is you come across all these little markers on the ground and they have little hints. Mm-hmm. And I thought they were part of the game, like built-in hints, and they were terrible. I was <laughs> nope. like, really? Why, why would they waste their time putting messages in like this? And then finally <laughs> realized that those are players leaving those messages. And they're just and trying most, to do them quick. <laughs> yeah, and most, most of them are messed up. But I, I did finally run into uh, a few that were helpful. Because you know, some of them are... Yeah, I walked up to this door... And it's locked, and there's a message on the ground that says "need a key." I'm like, yeah, no shit. But uh, um, there was this other place where I went, and there's two doorways, and one says "imminent shortcut," and the other said "imminent poison." So it's like, oh, cool, thanks. <laughs> now it didn't say that you had to go the poison route; you can't go the other way. But uh, the shortcut was actually a shortcut back to a place I had already been. Yeah, those hints were my favorite part in uh, yeah. Demon Souls. Just, just. Because I, I think I picked the picked up the game like a year after it was out, and they kept threatening to take down the servers just because it was kind of a smaller game. But people kept buying the game, and they kept taking the servers up. But I can't imagine playing this game without that that little online stuff, those little messages. They just kind of they make yeah. it feel pretty unique. It's pretty cool. So yeah, that, I thought that was cool. And you'll also see, um, you know, if somebody else is playing. You can kind of see hints of players. You'll see like little shadow figures run across an area you're in with somebody else's in the same place you are, which is kind of cool. Um, it kind of tricked me out at first because I wasn't sure what it was, and I was like, "Oh yeah, that must be other players." Well, I'm glad the game is somewhat clicking with you. We'll see if you stick with it. Um, yeah, Coop just started. Yeah, I'm sure, it gets way harder. Yeah, you just started uh, streaming actually. Um, Kind of weekly. I wouldn't. I won't commit you to that yet. But but look yeah. for Coop maybe once a week or once every other week. He'll definitely be streaming. Yeah, prob- probably Somewhere. every other week at least. Cool. Some weeks will be easier to do weekly than others, but kind of kind of depends on the fam. Yep. Um, and then for whatever we- reason, on I think it was Friday night, you and I were both up late, and I'm sitting here tweaking settings as you load up Skyrim just before <laughs> I'm loading up Skyrim. Um, I don't know what it was. It was a combination of watching Ethan's streams um, and the fact that I knew I had to get my PC game of Skyrim started at some point, but I didn't want to until I got um, got a list of mods to work with. Ethan finally sent me his list of mods, and I upgraded the hell out of Skyrim and... <clears throat> started started playing that again for the first time this weekend in in a very very long time and um took me a lo- it took me a while to get my bearings and then I had did have trouble with one of the mods um it's like a what are the it's called like the climates of whatever the whatever the world is yeah. um, um but I did find a tweak for it basically it tries to go for it has a bunch of different like hundreds of different uh, lighting settings for day and night, so no, not like every night kind of feels a little bit unique. But the ones I was using were just way too dark. It was like going for too much realism. It basically wanted you to wander around with a torch, but it made it so it was kind of unplayable and unwatchable. So I found a mod. I I found a different version of that mod, so I can actually see at night now, and it's a, it's it's a lot better. But uh, I need to get that from you. I have that same problem. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll, so that one actually, that was the weird part. So I got all the, the mods, and this is the first time I've gotten into mods since I got back into my PC. So this is, I went through all the Steam Workshop stuff, so that was pretty cool. Like, I basically had the list of the ones that I was looking for, and they showed up in search, and you just subscribe to them, and it automatically installs them, and comes up with a list of, do you want to activate or de- deactivate any of these before you start each round? And, um, yeah, I, the Skyrim looks incredible, <laughs> um, especially coming from... I had played probably 30 hours on the 360 and came to realize after the fact that I could I never even got the high-res texture pack to work on the 360. So it was uh, it was definitely a, a leap forward graphically. So that was, that was pretty awesome. Um, and then um, as far as playing the game, I'm not very far. I did... L- one of the intro dungeons to help out this town, and I told you a little bit about this story, but I wanted to share it for chat. 
So I get back to Riverwood, which is the v- the very first town you come across. <laughs> yeah, this is good. And so I'm playing an elf. I'm playing like my ranger style. I like to use bows. Um, and I walk back into town. I turn in all my stuff. I'm I'm got about to move on and step out of a building. And there's a chicken in the middle of the road. And I just kind of look at it and pull out my bow and I shoot the chicken. Because that's funny. It's funny to shoot chickens. Well, all of a sudden, like, three townspeople just come after me, like, screaming bloody murder. And they're going to kill me because I killed this chicken. And, like, as they're running at me, I'm like, one, I don't want to defend myself because I'm going to end up killing them. And... This is really, really early in the game, and I don't know who's tied to later quests, and, you know, one of these people was who I was sent to talk to originally, and it's like, I could really mess something up. And two, I'm trying to be a decent person in this world. You know, I say this after I killed a chicken, but in the grand scheme of what I'm going to, yeah, in the grand scheme of what I'm going to do, killing a chicken shouldn't really even rank on that list. Um, So, I, I I don't think I actually died. I ended up running into the sh- uh, shop and the lady chased me in there and I ki- so I killed like a, a shopkeeper or something and then I step outside and th- no I, I and then the the blacksmith ends up killing me cuz his wife comes after me and I don't want to kill her cuz it's just like you're like you're just the blacksmith's wife why no oh, but well, so I let him kill me respawn and the whole town's still going nuts on me so I run like a couple miles out of town, at least it feels like, and they're still chasing me down and they're not <laughs> going away and they're constantly attacking me and obviously going to kill me. So I finally defended myself and killed his wife and um, and killed <laughs> and killed the blacksmith and moved on. It was uh, it was not how I wanted to start Skyrim. <laughs> I was like, nice. I was trying to be a good person, but they. Apparently, they place a lot higher value on chickens in Skyrim than we do here. So, so I don't know if about that's that. going to screw you up later. I hope not. I like, hate you in that town from now on. I mean, yeah, I hope like that black. I mean, the blacksmith was like he was teaching me stuff. He was he taught me like the basic blacksmithing items, and I'm pretty yeah. sure the the first lady was somebody important. But we'll see. We'll see. I I mean, there are. Plenty of other things to do in that game, but that was just a weird foot to start off on when I totally didn't intend for that to happen. Like every other time I've played games like that, if I want things to go sideways, I've I know what I'm doing. But I really did not anticipate killing a chicken would set off that chain of events. So that's pretty funny. Um, so I think I'm quite a bit further than you in that game too. I yeah, but I got I got decent I got a decent amount on the 360. You, you did a lot more. Uh, you said you did some of the little side missions in yeah, the first yeah. city. I've basically been blowing through the story right yeah. now. But I mean... I, I need to do more side stuff because I'm getting owned by some of the things I'm running into. Yeah. Did you get all the expansions? Uh, Not all of them. I, I think I just have Down Guard right now. Okay. Dawn Guard. Dawn, Dawn, Dawn Guard. Guard. Dawn Guard. Dawn Guard. Um, yeah, I just picked up the expansions. We'll see. We'll see how much I stick with it because I, I still want to play Witcher 2 and some other stuff, but... Um, yeah. I actually have that in my list too. What's with all these RPGs? <laughs> What's happening oh, to you? So somebody weird. get somebody get this man a gun. <laughs> so they they need some better shooters to come out. I guess. <laughs> yeah. I play Bioshock. It's over. <laughs> we'll find you something. Um, game of the week from chat. Uh, JPT has been playing Capsized. Uh, it looks like it's a indie two D platformer. Um, it it's also I think in the. Uh, Android Humble Bundle right now. So, uh, along with some some other goodies. Aaron and Jordan, uh, this was my close second place, if not the first place, but I will talk plenty about Rogue Legacy later this week, and that's their game of the week, because all I'll say about Rogue Legacy, um, I, I wrote a Game Curious on it, so you can check that out. You can even and, um, see our video on it, but it was the game I was thinking about the entire weekend. Like, it just... I hadn't had that happen. I'm like in the middle of four huge games and all I want to play and all my brain is 
uh, thinking through his rogue legacy and how to like level up my character and get to the next thing. And um, it was kind of an indie surprise last week. Um, if you like 2D action games, I'd say even just like Castlevania, Metroidvania, that type stuff. Um, it has a lot has a lot for you. Plus, all the dungeons are randomly generated, and um, it's got a pretty cool um, legacy system where. When you die, you get resurrect, or you 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 play as your kid, and your kid will have some sort of genetic trait that is like either positive, neg- negative, or funny, and it just keeps every round you go through the castle just feels new. So it's it's pretty awesome. So, um, have you been checking out anything on Horrible Night? I know you you've been working on some music for us. So if you don't got an article, we can uh, talk about your music, but. I, yeah, I have been just working on music. I haven't been on the site too much. I, been, I skimmed it a little bit, but so you're working on trying to get us a theme for both top top video game podcast and um, Night Force, I believe. Yep. Um, yeah, I've been down for a while because ever since I well, when I upgraded my computer, it kind of threw off all my hardware that I had because my sound card was really old and needed to be replaced anyways. But it didn't work in Windows 8. Um, so I was kind of out of commission for a while until recently when I got uh, when I bought that new mixer. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've had it. I've actually had it set up for a while too, but I never hooked the rest of my software up and got it reinstalled. And I finally got everything going this past week and started playing some stuff. Um, but I'm getting there. I, I got to get back in the groove. Cool. I've got a I've got a pretty cool beat going that I think might work for a top video game podcast, and I've got some ideas in my head for <laughs> night night force. For night force. <laughs> yeah, I, I've got something in my head. It's just a matter of can I get it out and translate it into a song. That's sometimes difficult, but yeah. So I hacked together uh, your couch co-op. <laughs> yeah, you did theme for night force. Basically. Enough for us to get by, but bad enough that I knew it would bother you enough that you would want to write a new song. Yeah. Um, and then Rhinoceros Beatles uh, been kind enough to let us use one of their songs for Top Video Game Podcast for now. Um, and hopefully, I think we'll continue to reach out to them in the future, but definitely check out Rhinoceros Beetle if you have the time. Um, let's go on to Worst of the Week in Gaming. Just uh, something that's bugged you the last week of headlines or just in your own gaming coop. Uh, for me, it's been how the gaming community is responding to Microsoft, basically in general. Recently, the <laughs> <laughs> the uh, you know their free games that they're giving with Xbox Live. Um, it's like, yeah, it, their first one sucks, um, but you know, it's free. Who cares? <laughs> I, you didn't have a free one two months ago. Yeah, yeah. Seriously, I mean, I mean, you know. I don't, I don't know. It's I, I I wish I could remember what the first games Sony launched with. I mean, I know they were kind of big, but, but they ha- and, oh, yeah. I don't, but I, they also so yeah, and I mean they they give out a bunch of crappy stuff too. Not every game that they post is. But they cool. give away a bunch of stuff. That's the other thing. But they do, yeah. And like, but you know, to to their defense, Sony has been trying to play catch up. Yeah. So they kind of had to. You know, if they launched PlayStation Plus and said, hey, mm-hmm. if you pay, we'll give you a bunch of free games. And if they only did crappy games, then they never would have got anybody to sign up for it. So now they have everybody hooked into PlayStation Plus, and you're going to keep paying because you want to keep playing all your games so they don't take them away. Yeah, I don't know even know what Microsoft's incentive was to do this, the, the yeah. games for gold. I wonder if Xbox what? Live Gold subscriptions are down a little bit. I think they're just, yeah, they might be. I mean, I know a few people that dropped their gold subscriptions because they didn't use them anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, But, uh, I mean, I feel like it was just kind of a, they've been paying a little too much to all the whiny gamers out there because they they are whining big time. Um, Yeah, but... And it's... (laughs) It's just one thing after another for them, too. It is, it is. And, you know, I don't know. It just drives me. I see. Last they they come out and announce that they're going to start doing this, and the games they pitch are Halo Three and Assassin's Creed Two. Like, not even going to yeah. give you the most recent Assassin's Creed game, or the second or third most recent Assassin's Creed game, and we're not going to give you the most recent Halo game. And then they launched. They actually launched with Fable Three, which made sense because that's yeah. that. Um, 
definitely a Microsoft game. But it's but you you talk about those three games, and that's you know those are AAA releases, and then they went to Defense Grid uh, this month, then and that's what everybody was upset about. And I think it's I don't know like. I agree. I'm I'm kind of over everybody overreacting to Microsoft, but it was just they just keep tripping <laughs> over themselves. So I'm just yeah. I'm still just kind of laughing at this story. That like <coughs> here's the one game, and you sign into PlayStation Plus, and it's just like <laughs> here are 20 games, and yeah. they work on multiple systems and wh- whatever. <laughs> I, I think the first month I just signed up for PlayStation Plus, and you can get what Uncharted Three, yeah, XCOM, yeah. Deus Ex. Uh, I mean it's. It's a ridiculous list. Yeah. Um, so, you know, yeah, I can understand why people are upset, but at the same time, like, I think people overreact over the dumbest things. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's, free. it's kind of time to, time to breathe on Microsoft a little bit here. Yeah. I mean, they're not going to give out for free their latest games. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's really just the people who aren't buying games right away who I feel like are probably getting mad because it's like... You know, some of these. If you're a if you're a hardcore gamer, you've played most of the games before the stuff hits the even the free stuff on uh, PlayStation Plus. Because I mean, how yeah. long has Uncharted Three been out now? Right. So right. so they're throwing it on there, and it's cool for somebody like me who doesn't keep up. But yeah, you know, it's I don't know, it's free. I did notice that when I got into PlayStation Plus, like I, you know, moving from platform like. I play on all the platforms, but I tend to, you know, you always tend to focus on one more than the others. And, like, it's been a good year since I really even paid attention to my PlayStation 3. And it's just like, oh, shit. There, you know, there are several solid releases on PSN and a couple big PS3 games that I didn't touch that yeah. um, are suddenly at my fingertips. So it's 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 kind of nice. But, you know, I wonder what that's like for the, the hardcore PlayStation 3 fan that's kind of stuck with them, like. They probably already have all these games anyway, so PlayStation Plus probably isn't as big a deal to them. But um, yeah, but I don't know. Enjoy this time now because with the way backwards compatibility is going to work at launch for the next systems, you're not going to have like these free games aren't really going to mean much to you um, yeah. uh, come launch. So um, my worst of the week is the Ouya and it's it's launch. I'm not shitting on the Ouya in concept because it's a hundred dollar console and there's some pretty weird games out there and it's a whole different audience, a whole different type of console. I'm fine with what the Ouya is. I am kind of irritated with their uh, support for their Kickstarter fans who, so you're either in one of two boats. You either got a alpha version of the Ouya console. So you got like a cheap kind of buggy version of, a really really cheap console um or you're still waiting on your cheap buggy version of your console to come in because they didn't they weren't able to ship out all their uh kickstarter consoles in time before the consumer release of the product so um that just let that kind of be a lesson to anybody if you're looking to back any hardware kickstarters that's a whole other um messy ball game as far as hardware versus software but they said you know it really wasn't on Ouya's side as more on their whoever's handling their shipping so um that's kind of it's got to be really frustrating for the people that were super excited about that console but i don't think in a couple of months we'll uh, it'll all shake sh- shake out and uh um we'll figure out if the Ouya is even worth anything so I haven't really been following that one that much, but yeah, it seemed like you were all are just waiting for me to pick one up. And burn. Yeah, it, I was actually. <laughs> <laughs> it'd be fun to it'd be fun to play with it, but I don't see myself really. I don't know the tech, the kind of games that'll run on it. I don't think I'll. Yeah, I think it's more interesting from your emulation and Xbox Media side of it too. So yeah, um, and just you know. Who, <laughs> Anybody can put just about anything on this little system. So, yeah. um, and for a hundred bucks, why not? So, well, let's get to chats. Uh, worst of the week in gaming. Uh, JPT uh, is not a fan of running out of hard drive space uh, thirty minutes into recording a let's play video <laughs> and not realizing it until uh, <laughs> later. So, yeah, I uh, we've been doing a lot of uh, streaming this year and. Hard drive space is already at a at a at an all time low for me. So make sure you uh, 
know where your files are being saved and make sure your backups are also intact because that's the next phase. Your hard drive might be full. Well, also, what if it crashes and you lose everything? So don't mess with that. Um, <laughs> I actually wrote this down kind of funny, but Aaron's uh, worst of the week is the tiny uh, DLC <laughs> that has been released for Bioshock Infinite. Um, yeah. And there's still really no no word on when the true story uh, DLC is coming. So, uh, surprise, surprise, they are taking their time with this DLC. And, um, But if any company can and probably will make it worth your while, uh, Irrational might be one of them. But actually, when I wrote down Tiny DLC, I thought he meant there was some <laughs> Tiny, Tia, Tiny Tina DLC for Bioshock. <laughs> I was like, that's I don't think that's right. And Jordan might have just won Worst of the Week in Gaming because... <laughs> His worst of the week is his coworker that is playing Candy Crush and <laughs> crushing That's video terrible. games in the process. Um, Jordan pointed me earlier to an article that really broke down the difference between free-to-play games and pay-to-win games and uh, games like Candy Crush that edge towards more that you have to actually pay money to succeed in the game and how that's kind of broken design. Um, it's on a Penny Arcade Report. Um, if you want to check that out, I'll, I'll post a link in the in the show notes when the show goes up on the site. Um, next up, best of the week in gaming. Coop, what do you got? Don Matrick leaving Microsoft. <laughs> <laughs> All Microsoft. Yeah. Um, this was funny, though. This was funny. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's... The reason I think it's good is that Xbox is obviously losing the touch they used to have with the gamers. Um, so, you know, I don't know if it's his fault. It probably isn't his fault, but, you know, maybe it'll... Somebody put him in the just, position, though. Yeah, it, maybe it'll kind of shake things up and they'll uh, they'll figure out what they're doing before they pull a Nintendo. Yeah, I mean, they'll... And, uh, they'll, they'll come back. It, it's just, it'll be a rough launch for him, but say what you will about all the reversal stuff, and you knew that with something like that, rolling back all those policies the week after E three, somebody was going to lose their job. Yeah, and um, the and and say what you will about the policies, but at least they are taking action now. Because while I understand everybody's issues with um losing out on some 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 really cool features by having the Xbox always on. They were obviously at the point where they realized they were going to be starting from way too far behind when that when these consoles kick off if the pre-order sales stayed where they were and they had to make a change. And I honestly didn't think they'd make a change. So um, the fact that they did and they're calling it this early, I think it's going to make it a lot more competitive. But... Um, but yeah, you knew there was still some more fallout from that, and Don Matrick has just never been the most charismatic. Dude. He's just a weird, goofy guy, and He's the fact, terrible. and the fact that like every article so far that I've read on this makes it seem like this is a jump forward for him to go to Zynga. <laughs> He's going to Zynga. How is that? How is that forward? I don't know. But. That's a. Uh... Oh, I got fired, and they think I'm cool. Yeah. So, yeah. Good luck to everybody involved. I'll be curious to see who steps up at Microsoft, yeah. and you know, it would be a good chance for whoever that person is to like set a new tone for the Xbox One even before launch. So that's the that's the crazy thing is all this stuff is happening before it's even out. Like I know we're like all there's a ton of most gamers don't even care about this shit and. We're getting all the, uh, um, all the craziness this early. But I think what they're trying to do, though, is because you know when the consoles come out right before Christmas, all anybody cares about is the holiday sales. So they they don't want to get completely demolished when the numbers come out right after Christmas, as far as how many Xboxes sold versus how many PlayStations sold. Because mm -hmm. I mean they've just been on top for so long. I just don't think they want to take that big of a hit to their egos. And then, and the other difference is Sony was in the same boat last gen, and they they didn't change course when they started losing. And I feel like that's the difference yeah. so far. Is Microsoft's at least made this change, but um, I don't know if they 
we'll see if they actually understand what they're doing or if they're just kind of, you know, just picking and choosing where to change direction and without a real yeah. plan. So, um, my best of the week is apparently <laughs> the Walking Dead DLC, 400 Days, <laughs> is fucking coming out this week. <laughs> And I had no idea that it was going to even. I thought this was coming out in August, maybe or later. I don't even. I don't even know when the show starts. When does the next season start? But I thought like more October, um, like before the show. Yeah, I don't think it's for a while. But because it's um, fall, definitely. Yeah. So I guess they're they're gonna try. They're gonna so four hundred days. The just side story DLC. You need to own at least one episode of The Walking Dead for this to work on your system. Um, it's coming out to, let's see, July 2nd on PlayStation, July 3rd on PC, July 5th on Xbox, and then uh, iOS next week. Um, and then they're going to try to do Season 2 of The Walking Dead yet this year. So, <coughs> I don't know, I just assumed we'd be a year and a half, two years away from another season of The Walking Dead, and... Um, I I really now I need to finish The Last of Us, catch my breath before diving into The Walking Dead because I don't know if I can emotionally handle both of these games. <laughs> how uh, how close are you on The Last of Us? If I had to guess, I'm two thirds the way through. I've probably got two or three hours left, but uh, I can't. I just cannot play that game for more than ninety minutes at a time. It's just it's brutal. It just and- puts me in a weird mood, man. It's just. <laughs> I go to dark places. I uh, the things I do to survive. It's just kind of frightening. I'm glad I'm not live streaming that. People will be judging me. I can't wait. Best of the week from chat. Um, got some repeats here. <laughs> um, we got two votes from JPT and Aaron for uh, Rise of the Triad. They just announced pre-orders for that. I believe the game comes out uh, this July. The first trailer I saw for this just looks straight up silly it is it's trying to do old school first person shooters um and somehow modernize it i don't it it wants to be fast it wants to be silly um but the trailer just made it look like a piece of shit so um (laughs) but i'll trust jpt and aaron for seeing some fun in that uh more so than i did and then uh JPT and Jordan gave a shout out to our uh, Ho Night Game Night Awesome Knots Dickfish video. Um, if you haven't seen that, that Dick is on our fish. our YouTube site, uh, youtubecom slash Um I, uh, I was supposed a little bit uh, little article on the site, but we had a game night about a month ago um, where. Um, the Horrible Night writers and uh, our friends in chat and our fans, we played about three hours worth of Awesome Knots, and there were a couple recurring um, themes to the game and a lot of phrases that were being screamed and repeated, so I cut a highlight video of some of those moments, and um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. That's that's much more um, of a, a community-focused video, and I hope to do more of those soon, because that was a lot of fun playing that, and I hope that brought back some some good memories for everybody. So, uh, thanks for playing. And we're going to try to do more of those, um, those game nights at least once a month, try to pick a multiplayer game out ahead of time, but you never know. We'll just kind of randomly play those games as well. So, and then, um, before we get out of here, my last question is, so Ethan, um, our Germany consultant who moved to Germany about a year, a little less than a year ago, um, from the United States, he will be celebrating July 4th in Germany this year um, by starting a live stream at 10 a.m. Eastern on July 4th, and he's just taking open, open suggestions for what games to play um, in his fight for freedom. So um, as far as like explosion-filled games that he should try, Coop and Chat, do you have any ideas or recommendations for Ethan as we, we pick some games? Hmm. He was looking for originally the Independence Day PC game <laughs> from a w- long time ago, but nice. I don't think that's going to run on modern machines. That's not like on good old games or anything like that. But yeah, I think how old sh- how old was that game? It's, I remember it. I mean, when was the movie? Yeah, it's 
mid late nineties, right? Something like that. Yeah, I was gonna say I was probably I was in junior high or high school. Yeah, ninety. I want to say ninety five, ninety six for Independence Day. Yeah, gotta be not, probably summer ninety six. If I had to guess, ninety nine. No, I don't think so. I don't think it's ninety nine. But we have um, the interwebs, we can figure it out. <laughs> uh, as far as explosions, um, or just stupid USA games. I um, Saints Row's got to be in there. Um, it's too yeah. bad Team America doesn't have a video game because that's the true emotion. Yeah, I was with. actually thinking of that. Like he could just use that theme song. There was that really silly early Xbox Live Arcade puzzle game that was that you basically played with fireworks. <laughs> he could end with that. <laughs> Interstate seventy six. That'd be. Oh, that yeah, could, was, there that, was. Uh, that could work. Does he have a connect? He can do the whole connect sparklers <laughs> demo. <laughs> get on the <laughs> yeah. he, he'll just get real. He'll just get real sparklers and film himself. If I had to guess. Yeah, that's true. That'd probably be better. We could set his house on fire while he's doing it. Oh, come on, best explosions. What do we got? Fifty cents in there. Um, oh, fifty cent was maybe good. like maybe like Army of Two. That's not really explosions though. That's more bro, uh, broness. It's more suck. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to like that game so bad, but it was terrible. Um. What well, does have a lot of explosions? Explosions are pro pro America. Smash TV. <laughs> that would <laughs> <laughs> that would work. Explosion Man. Explosion Man does have a lot of explosions. Yeah. Play Minecraft and make your own White House. <laughs> <laughs> nice one, no more. All right. Well, if you guys have any ideas, hit us up on our uh, Facebook page or on Twitter at Horrible Night. And uh, we'll pass it along to Ethan as we select our games. More info on that uh, coming later in the week. But he's going to start at 10 a.m. Eastern and just go for as long as his patriotism can hold out. So uh, I think that's going to do it for Top Video Game Podcast of the Week for this week. Coop, thanks for hanging out. Hey, no problem. Chat, thanks again. Couldn't do this show without you. And we will catch you next time. See ya. Peace.